I hope you guys had a good new year. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, we're going to talk about how to defend two back sets when you're playing three seam match principles from the coverage standpoint, all right, and how they get aligned um, and, and, and what to look for. But quickly, I do want to kind of make a plug real quick um, that my uh, main league, the league I've been in for about 20 years, it's called the 2-2-0. Uh, we call it the 2-2-0 Reloaded. Uh, it's a sim league. Um, we actually, I'm actually happy to, to be a part of creating its um, sister league called 2-2-1, second to one. 2 2 stands for second to none. 2 2 one, second to one. And basically we're creating a, a sister league. Uh, it's starting up here um, because of what happened with EA Sports with the collapse of uh, CFMs going down. We figured there's a lot of guys that want to restart or want to look for a new home. Um, and we wanted to create the same environment we have in the 2 2 and just do it with um, different people, um, bringing more people into our world, uh, into our sim world. And you guys who watch my videos, my gameplay videos, if you like what you see, you think that the gameplay is um, sim and guys are not calling uh, the same plays over and over, um, they're not you know spamming stuff. Just hit me up, send me a comment, um, hit me up in the comment section, give me your name, whatever, on PSN. We play the PS5, so that's, I should have started with that. It is a PS5 league, but, you know, hit me up there, um, or my Twitter account is Geronimo223. You can hit me up there, and uh, I'll be looking for guys throughout the year to come join us, all right? So we're jumping to this video. I'm actually going to start off by showing you a little bit of uh, PowerPoint. Of a, of a real life um, playbook that I did in the NFL. All right, and then we're jumping to the tape. This is a document from the Buffalo Bills first year, Mike Pettin, 2014, um, 2013, sorry, season. And I personally made this document. This is what you would see in most playbooks. And a lot of guys do this on purpose. So when you get playbooks and you see, oh, this is what they do. A lot of times, a lot of the surface information is here they tell you your responsibility. This one doesn't even talk about match rules, okay? And we were a match team. So the stuff that's below playbooks like this or stuff that the guys get, personal information, are PowerPoints like this that you see in meetings or your or, or things that you can get, you know, the extra information. So I personally made this one back then. And it really covers all the words and the way we the way the way we wanted guys to play routes. Okay, um, we didn't really show this to them, but this is really for the coaches or guys that wanted to take it to another level. And I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. This is cover three uh, match. Okay, and we don't have to go through all the little nitty gritty here, but I just wanted to show you that versus a two by one set. All right. Because that's what this video is going to be about. First is a two back set. All right, two guys, two backs in the backfield. Your nickel Sam. All right, and I I labeled it like that on purpose to show that this could be a base defense. This could be a three down defense, right? And we're actually sending um, a weak side linebacker off the edge, and it's a Sam linebacker, right? And the sky safety is going to come down and replace that weak side linebacker. Or this could be a nickel defense, all right, where we actually have a nickel on the field and we're playing our version of match from a three-sky look, okay? So, anyway, when two goes vertical, anything over 10 yards, really, and the most important route that we really want to take care of are the vertical and outbreaking routes, so corner routes, the nickel or Sam, all right, he's going to run up with them and match him, okay? And we had a word for it called poison. So, from a teaching standpoint, just to go through it real quick, basically, anytime number two, all right, so whoever was the flat defenders, okay, if number two was a threat to go vertical, he's in, he's aligned in a position to go down the field. So in this case, the tight end is in position, to, he's in position that he could run something deep. We would use the word poison, okay, and that would tell him to match that player if he goes beyond 10 yards. I'll talk a little bit about if he goes inside, but let's just talk about really if he goes vertical straight down the field or he runs a corner. 
On the opposite side, the other curl flat defender, quote unquote, is the safety coming down on the right side of the pitcher. And if his number two is in the backfield, he will say sky, which means that he's going to play zone. He's going to be a zone dropper, okay, hook to, uh, curl to flat dropper, all right? Now, both of the linebackers are hook players, just like you would see even in the Madden world, all right? They're going to basically relate off of three. Um, if you see here in this picture, both back step to the left. Anytime that happens, it would be a push call, which basically would just push the linebackers over in their underneath zones a little bit so that they can help out probably where the ball is going, all right? But I just wanted to show that. Um, and then going through different types of routes and things that can happen. Um, two by one here. This is just what we call an NCAA route. On the left-hand side, the curl flat defenders who we're focusing on, he starts off saying poison. That's why it's in parentheses, okay? Um, and then, quotations, I'm sorry. And then as the route develops and he goes underneath 10 yards, okay, going inside, he now becomes a sky player, a curl to flat player. So we call it sky on the move. So once the ball is snapped, he turns into a sky player. On the weak side, same thing, nothing changed. But if you see these pictures, you see the corners are all playing Meg, right? They're just basically locked up on number one. We like to press them a lot. That's their responsibility. They don't have to worry about what type of route they're getting. They're locked on their guy, okay? Now, another play here that's a little bit interesting. I won't go through it. This has always been something we had to train. But if you got a Texas combination here or an angle route, as we called it, all right, starts off as poison. Um, it's really kind of tough because when the ball is snapped, the uh, fullback or the H is going to the flat to start. And it could be kind of tempting, you know, what are you going to tell that, that nickel or that Sam linebacker? What is he going to do, right? So in this case, we would say just stay, stay poison. Two goes out. The original two, who's the, who's the tight end, stay with him, okay? And then the Mike linebacker, he needs to be ready for, to b definitely get out there into that three receiver hook and be ready for this route. It's pretty much a matched up concept here, all right? If for some reason team wants to run a flood combination, which should be coming up, we do have an exchange situation where we can say, all right, the nickel and the Sam, you guys are going to, I'm just going to use one word for now. I'm just going to call it nickel Sam. The nickel Sam player, he's going to just take the guy. He's going to take three to the flat, which is an exchange. Technically, he's not supposed to take three to the flat. And we're going to tell the, the Mike linebacker to stay with two, even if he runs a corner. So that would be a game plan alert type of situation. All right. But you see all this stuff here. Now we get into the slot formation family. And poison is happening on the right-hand side of the screen. Our safety's coming down, playing over number two. He's playing outside leverage, and he has two. Is obviously in position to go what down the field. So the key thing I want to say, and I'll end it with this, and I'll jump into some Madden tape because this is just showing you how we played it versus two backs in the backfield um, and how we aligned. Madden doesn't play it exactly the same. Um, they pretty much lock on their poison player on number two man to man once he goes over 10 yards which i understand in the coding that's the way it is but let me just say this if number two let's just use logical sense here okay if number two is running a post route or even a deep over route heading away from the poison player does that poison player really need to match no because you have a safety in the middle of the field who can help out let me see if there's another better example here all right let me get back to Dagger. Dagger was kind of a game plan situation. But just in general, we kept that player, that that whoever was that poison player on the slot receiver versus two backs, we kept him outside to play the corner route combinations. I don't know why I don't have that drawn up right now. Here we go. Here goes a good example. So here right now it's a nickel Sam because he's to the passing strength. The corner route combination, the flood combination, this is what we really, really wanted to make sure that we played hard, okay? Anything that went inside, we actually told that player to drop off. So if he ran, like in this route right here, the Y is running that bender, we basically said if he goes down the field, just stay with him for about 10 yards, and then after that, let him go and fall off in that zone and be ready to help out. And that's the reason why... If I remember correctly, I have to go find the tape. I remember Denora Cersei was our safety. We got a dagger route concept versus I don't know who it was, but he basically fooled the heck out of the out of the quarterback. He looked like he was about to turn and run with number two, 
And then once he recognized that that route was not going to be a corner, he just stopped, turned around, set, set right in that window at about 15 yards and picked off a dig route. All right. That was thrown right to his face. Um, and I think we even put our corner in outside leverage to kind of sell it even better. Now, where's the stress on that situation? The safety has to be able to get over there and cover number two, basically almost in a man-to-man -man principle, okay? But that's just one to talk about that real quick. So that's the main part of um, running this coverage um, is to take away some of those outbreaking routes. And then if there's no outbreaking route, you technically don't have four vertical threats here. So you can have that player, that poison player, and two backs in the backfield, he can kind of basically fall off and become his own defender. All right, so we're jumping to Madden, take a look at how that works um, versus two backs in the backfield, normal spacing, and how we're going to, you know, how we're going to take advantage of it and things that we need to look for. Let's take a look at some of this stuff that we got going on. We're going to come out I eye formation, and we're just going to come out really come out of one particular play. But on defense right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and cover three seam and let's go with um an under front three seam all right i know i have some here in my three four packages all right let's go with uh even over under let's go with under okay it's gonna put the linebacker playing seam flat so as we look at this from the defensive point of view you see that the right outside linebacker on the screen here, he's a seam flat defender, okay? On the left side, in this defense, the free safety came down. He's a seam flat defender on the left side, all right? So when you're on defense, you look at the offense, come out, two backs, you have probably good, really good indication in real life because it's 21 personnel, two backs, one tight end. But the main thing you want to do is the left side, right side of the screen here, they're going to look at the spacing between the number one receiver and the number two receiver and if we have what we say normal spacing which means it's five plus yards or six plus yards i should say between number one and the number two in man in line of scrimmage um or the two surface side i should say um those two players are going to now put the defense on the right hand side playing their match rules so this is very similar to the two by two video i did where the two surface side normal spacing we're playing match outside corners playing mod technique man over depth he's gonna play anything over 10 yards um, there's a little bit of a gray area if you get like a 12 yard curl he may kind of zone that off especially if number two goes to the flat but just in general anything over 10 yards he's gonna match up man to man the seam flat defender here okay he's gonna now play anything by number two, if he goes out to the flat right now, so it could be a five yard out, or if he goes over 10 yards, period, anything over 10 yards, he's gonna take it and match it man to man, okay? This is that poison player that I was just talking about in the video before, all right? So, the next two players here are gonna be your hook curl defenders. Now, again, just like in two by two, the hook curl defender aligned to the match side the side that match is activated match is happening he's going to now key three to two and if three whichever is three his final three if he goes to the flat because i'm sorry let me go back he's really keen two to three if two goes vertical all right or goes out then he's going to match three if three goes to the flat all right if anything else happens he's just going to become a hook curl defender in this case all right he doesn't have to wall any number two coming underneath he doesn't have to worry about that because he has a zone side right adjacent to him okay now on the back side these three players over here are going to be playing zone coverage because the rule is in match coverage in madden in madden and match three seam coverage if you are or if you are to the solo side, which means there's only one wide receiver to your side, okay? Now, in Madden world, you're going to play zone coverage. So you have a deep third corners corner. You have whoever is your seam flat defender is now just playing as if he was playing sky coverage. He's going to play hook to curl. And your cur hook curl defender over here is going to play generic as if you called three sky. He's going to play hook to curl to this side okay so 
This side, left side of screen, these three players are playing zone, true zone drops. Over here, we have the potential of match coverage happening depending on the route distribution, okay? So, as I already have lined up for us here is a perfect play from the defensive standpoint to stop this flood concept, all right? You're going to get the outside linebacker here in this case is going to match the vertical route of two. He runs a corner route over 10 yards, so he's going to take that. Um, your corner is going to basically just end up matching number one going vertical. That's a no-brainer. He would have been there if it wasn't match. And then your linebacker, this is, I'll just get him pointed out here, and then I'll back up. This linebacker right here, your hook curl defender, because he's to that match side, because you have normal spacing, he's going to match three to the flat. All right, and you see how he has to read it out. He really has to read two to three. If two goes past him as he does there, right? He's in. He's heading vertical. He's heading beyond him, and three goes to the flat. He's going to match him. All right, so that's how that works. If two for some reason was to come underneath, he would not match three or the new number two. He would just become a hook to curl player. All right. So that's that. And on the back side, we have our zone drops. Pretty self-explanatory on the back side, okay? And this combination right here is um, a flood combination. Pretty, com pretty common, all right? And the dig on the back side is usually what you get when you get a flood combination. So these underneath zone defenders, really this hook to curl player needs to be aware of that. He's playing zone, but he's pretty much the only player that can get in this window. And you hope that the pressure can get home before, you know, that ball is thrown into maybe a second window over here in this hash, all right? So that's the beginning of that. Um, just from the standpoint of just going through routes, I can just on offense here, just give you some different examples. So if two goes to the flat, all right, like on an out route, one runs a curl, should be pretty simple. This is going to end up getting you that match combination here. Your C flat defender is going to match two to the flat and the corner is going to match that curl route because the curl route is past 10 yards okay he's not going to keep dropping back he's pretty much playing that mod technique man over depth all right so we saw that real quick i'll show you the replay don't want to go too fast here quick out under 10 yards so anything out or anything vertical he's basically matching that that seam flat defender now the linebacker next to him doesn't have any three he's see how he's peeking over at two he's going to play it slow to go and then he's going to look at three if three doesn't go out he's just going to become a zone defender okay uh, probably an unrealistic play right now but let me see i'll do it from the backfield let me go with the original play here i'm going to go two going out and three going out the both linebackers should match their guys okay so the sam linebacker matched two the mike linebacker matched three all right now if two was to come underneath all right and it doesn't really matter what three does here because as soon as two comes underneath your seam flat defender your sam linebacker in this case he's going to turn into a zone player all right he's going to turn into a curl flat defender as soon as that happens all right so in this game sometimes he kind of matches them a little bit it's kind of like an in-between world he doesn't really get back with any depth in his curl drop to like 10 yards. He pretty much kind of hangs out, but you know, gives a little love to maybe something going deep. Oops, wrong play. But the point is, it becomes now true zone sky, as I said in my um, uh, last part of that presentation, sky on the move. All right. So that's pretty much it. Let me see if I can think of any other examples. Uh, oops, didn't mean to run that again. But in general that's what you want to do when you play that's the reason why you want to play match is to give you good protection versus vertical routes um to the two receiver side versus that type of set now if i came out in a slot formation all right and i won't give myself the hardest one right off the bat and we came out in the same defense again in this case Depends on how you call your cover three seams, depending on who will come down. You can always flip them, all right? But if we're in an over front here, 
Uh, if we're in an underfront, I'm sorry. Let's go back to underfront. Three seam, all right? The linebacker's still your drop player. Now he's aligned to that solo side, okay, where there's only one wide receiver. So he's going to be just a curl flat defender in Madden. This corner is going to be a true third outside zone drop corner, all right? And this linebacker is going to be a regular hook to curl zone drop, hook to curl player. Now on this side, the left side of the screen, you have normal spacing. You have two wide receivers. So then they're, they now activate into what? Their match rules. So now the safety, the free safety came down in this formation um, to play his seam flat. And he has the same rules that we just went over with the linebacker. He's going to key two, all right? If two goes vertical or outside, then he's going to take them. He's going to match them, all right? If two goes, comes underneath, under 10 yards going to the inside, he would just become a curl defender, all right? This player out here will play his, what? His mod technique, man over depth. He'll play one. If one goes vertical, he'll match him. If not, he just zones off and becomes the third outside third corner, all right? I haven't talked about the post safety. His, his rules don't change at all. Safety in the middle is an inside thirds player, okay? And this linebacker here, the hook curl defender, he's now keying two he's keying two to three if two comes inside right now quick he knows he could just be a regular hook, hook curl player if two basically does anything else if he runs vertical he runs outside he's looking to match his number three which would be coming from the backfield from this formation all right so we got a simple play here we just got dagger we should get our matches here with our free safety our corner and I'm not sure if anybody went to the flat there. Um, you won't get a match from... Actually, let me, it depends on where number three comes from. So let me just go through it real quick. We got our number two being matched here on his vertical seam route. Our corner, he's going to play not the best technique, but he's going to play his... He's going to match number one on the dig route because it's past 10 yards. All right. Now... This linebacker, I had said, it will match three, right, when two goes vertical. But there was no two. The, the, his three didn't come from, and it's the final three. I hate to use all these new words, but when you're matching, a lot of times they say final three. Whoever is the number three, if it comes from a different than normal positioning, you still have to be aware of that. So this tight end coming across the field, he will match that number three, right, and then he knows he has to match him because the other two are matching their players, okay? So be aware of that if you're playing a hook-to-curl defender a linebacker to the seam, um, to the match side, all right? Backside, it's just playing zone, simple, all right? That's it. Let's take a look at another combination. Um, let's just, I mean, a two-out, quick-out. We should get pretty much the same idea that we just saw here. Nothing crazy. I'm just going to run it one time on film. There you go. All right. I'm going to give you a two under. All right. And again, this is how, you know, this is how we would coach our players, like, in meeting rooms um, and on the field. We just go through reps, right? You go through formations. And you just make sure that they have their rules straight. All right. Now, the weakness in this dagger play is the outside leverage corner. You know, but he does and should have some help from somewhere, um, especially when you've seen this play on film from one of these zone defenders. But two went under, right? So your seam flat corner, I mean, your seam flat safety becomes a zone dropper. Now, this gets a little bit funky here. And I kind of gave, if you ever watch my videos when I talk about match coverage, something that could really mess up match coverage, it doesn't matter if it's quarters or cover three, is running shallow routes or mesh concepts things under five yards crossing across the field from both sides because what you do here is you kind of mess with the rules of these match players that want to turn back into zone which they should that would that should cover this but then he kind of treats this as like almost a new number two going to the flat and kind of covers it late so it's a little bit funky um even in real life man that's that's realistic in real life it's you get guys kind of blowing a gasket as soon as you get mesh. And if you're a good defensive coordinator, a good defensive linebacker or DB coach, you got to train mesh in practice. You got to train shallow crossing routes, even deep ones, but shallow ones are the real problems. 
that really kind of mess up um, this type of defense. And if you ever watch a lot of teams nowadays that go up against match defenses, teams that go up against the Fangio-style defenses and everything, you're going to see teams running short routes. They're going to go back to what I had showed you in the first video, running just little simple hitch routes, five-yard hitches, five-yard outs, shallow routes, screens, things like that. Just get the ball out to the flat area or in the hook-to-curl areas, seam areas quickly, and match coverage is not really great against that. Match is good against deep routes. Um, it's the reason why the Fangio defense, I'm going off on a tangent here, became so popular because it takes care of a lot of deep breaking routes and also a lot of combination routes um, that used to beat traditional zone coverage. You know, you basically turn into man down the field, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. But if a team does come out and wants to run traditional quick game routes, um, you know, spacing, spot, uh, things get the ball out quick, or just traditional old school shallow cross routes, short, shallow crossing concepts, or um, the best, you know, mesh type concepts, right? Those things can really kind of bust this thing up a little bit. All right, so let me see if there's anything else here that I want to show you from this formation grouping, and then I'm quickly going to talk to you about what happens when it's not normal spacing, all right? I'm going to quickly take a look. Uh, post wheel. This my, I'm going to take a look at post wheel. I, I'm just curious. I'm going to actually going to come out here. It doesn't matter my defense necessarily. I'm going to come out in a nickel set. I just want to see how the safety does versus, and he totally screwed that one up. Now, practice mode, um, sometimes that first play in practice mode, the DBs really do a poor job of matching. But the second play should really give me an idea of what's going on here. You really got messed up again there. If you watch a lot of people <laughs> play nowadays, you're going to get post wheel combinations. Now, I don't know why Savage is completely messing this up. But Savage should take that wheel. He's just very late on it. And I've thrown three touchdowns in a row. So you got to be aware of that. You know what I'm saying? Got to be aware that three match has a little bit of a weakness there. Let me just back the defense up, which I don't wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this all the time. But I just want to see if it gives him a little bit more time to read this out, and it doesn't. So just be aware of that. That's a little bit of a weakness there against that. That's why I want to take a look at some other combinations to see anything you have to be aware of. Give you a little tip there. Um, but let's jump into a different type of formation. So I just saw it right here. Still two backs in the backfield, Z close, okay? And... I'm just going to run this. I'm going to change the play here. Let's come out again and let's come out and over. Let's come out and nickel over seam, three seam. Actually, we just do odd, okay? So odd is now going to have our safety coming down to the run strain side because the same linebacker or the linebacker aligned to that side is rushing. So he's now your seam flat defender. But if you look at the offensive formation, one and two are close, kind of in that stack alignment of what I call it. They're basically, they are within five yards of each other. So as soon as that happens, what happens to the defense? Match rules are now deactivated. It is turned off for a better, for a lack of a better term. And this safety that is highlighted is going to be just a regular curl defender, curl flat defender, like you would if you called Sky. The corner is going to play deep third, and the linebacker is going to play hook to curl with no matching principles, okay? So, it's one of my favorite plays in the game right there after you've run the ball a bunch. But just in general, you just have to understand that even if I was to run a combination like this, uh, let's get the tight end going a little deeper. You know, you would hope that, hey, match, you know, I can still play this, right? My seam flat defender is going to take that guy? Nope. He's his own defender, all right? Now, he only get there because maybe he has no work. But let me just, I don't know if they have this in the game. I don't think this is a popular play, but I'm running basically a scissors concept right now. Or a flood concept, you know what I'm saying? And you see how that linebacker, or that seam flat safety, he, he's basically playing zone. So you have to understand that. So when you get certain formations like this, you want to check to cover one. You want to check the quarters coverage. You can get a box check there. Um, things like that where you may not get a box check for that formation, but... Things that are similar. Now, let me give you one more formation. Uh, I don't have it in this playbook right here, but Debo package is basically gun split close, okay? And that package by itself, 
versus any type of three seam. Doesn't matter which three seam I call. Um, I'm just gonna call three seam the same one out of nickel, right? Because on the right side of screen you have one and two are close. They're within. They're not really within five. They're basically just at five yards. But this type of formation, as you look at it, it's a compression set, right? That's a no-brainer. And even if you include the running back. He is kind of making this look almost like a bunch-like formation. But again, your safeties and or your seam flat defenders, your whole defense right now is going to be playing zone drop. Obviously, on the backside, you have the same issue anytime you get a guy close. But really, what overrides that whole situation is, um, I just lost my controller there. What overrides that is that it's the solo side, right? There's only one, there's only one player that is um, actually... There's only one player to that side, so because of that, that's going to override everything, and you're going to get zone drop to the left side of the screen. So doesn't matter, even if I did give a route combination that, you know, doesn't mesh like I told you, meshes <laughs> mesh is hard to cover. But it doesn't matter. This is going to turn into three sky. I'm going to read the curl flat defender. He jumps the flat. I throw the deeper route, just as if somebody called three sky. So just know that. Um, it's kind of the weakness of the coverage. It's kind of limited to particular normal space formations, um, even if it's two backs in the backfield. You're going to get that same issue, okay? Um, I'll talk in the next video about 3 by one That'll be a quick video, but I do want to just kind of talk it through a little bit, uh, give you one little tip that I don't think a lot of people know, um, but I'll, I'll save that for the next video, all right? Appreciate you guys listening. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, hit me up. I told you guys about the league. We're looking for people right now. Uh, PS5 league. We're pretty much full, but, you know, people sometimes, you know, things happen, right? So I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.